Good day, everyone, and thank you for joining us on Rallys India Limited's Q2 and H1 FY25 earnings call. We have with us today Mr. Gyanendra Shukla, the Managing Director and CEO, yeah. and Ms. Subra Gorasaria, the Chief Financial Officer. Before we begin, I would like to mention that some of the statements made in today's discussions may be forward-looking in nature and may involve risk and uncertainties. A detailed statement in this regard is available in the result presentation. I now invite Mr. Shukla, Shukla to begin proceeding with the call. Over to you, sir. Uh, <coughs> uh, thanks, Gavin. Uh, good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us today on our Q2 fiscal year 25 earnings call. As mentioned by uh, Gavin, I have alongside with me Shukla, our CFO. Let me begin the discussion by uh, dwelling into the industry landscape initially, post which I will discuss Alice's specific developments. We continue to witness mixed signals across agrochemical demand recovery in global markets. Volumes are largely back across key markets and AI is through lower pricing. Low, lower pricing continue to impact realizations. <laughs> Production from China uh, continues to be high and margins are stressed across geographies. In domestic market, rainfall was erratic with the spatial distribution causing floods and dry spells in different parts of the country. On an overall basis, monsoon season 2024 concluded with roughly 8% above normal rainfall, impacting key agricultural regions like Rajasthan, Gujarat, <coughs> Western Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra, uh, Kalangana State, and AP. Uh, Kharif 24 swings as of 20th September uh, reached about 110 million hectare versus 108.8 million hectare last year. Area under paddy has gone up by 2%, pulses by 8%, maize by 4%, whereas area under cotton has declined by 9%. <laughs> Extensive rain in some part of the country, especially during mid-August to September period, which is the key demand period for agrochemical companies, did create growth challenges for the industry at large. Continuous rain resulted in lower application of pesticide sprays, which in effect led to lower volume growth, especially in the herbicide category. IMD predicts October to December rainfall to be 112% of long-term uh, long average, potentially affecting Kharif crop harvest. La Nina conditions, which may cause uh, below normal temperature in northern and central India, uh, could lead to cold wave events. Export market demand recovery is still not very promising. Lower prices and volatility are making chemical player, players process in inventory buildup. China continues to keep the market well supplied. <laughs> demand in the U.S. has been relatively better. Demand remains uncertain in Europe uh, due to operating challenges with unrest in Middle East uh, further adding more pressure. Moving on to rallies uh, specific developments, we had a robust Q2 performance on the back of a strong double-digit volume growth in domestic market. Our revenue stood at 928 crore versus 832 crore of uh, Q224 and profit of the tax at 98 crore, which is 20% higher than the previous year uh, uh, similar quarter. Crop care delivered a strong volume with revenue growth of 7%. Within crop care, growth is, growth is domestic led with export business continuing to remain under pressure. Seed revenue is up by 48% due to better Kharif liquidation. EBITDA for quarter two fiscal year 25 stood at 166 crore higher by 24% compared to Q2 previous year. Moving to the individual businesses, business-wise performance, our export business has displayed resilient performance and focus on maximizing volumes and driving capacity utilization for our plant plants. In Metribuzin, we have done highest ever volume in first half 25 with half volume surprise, with half year volume surprising, fiscal year 24 volume already. Hexaconazole is also showing good momentum, and we're working on expanding the bottlenecking to serve the increasing demand. Pandemic is in a long good track with long-term demand being steady. Our work around capacity expansion with new efficient technologies should also be commercialized by the end of financial year. SFA market uh, continues to be under pressure in U.S. and Brazil with key input raw material at uh, lowest ever price. Across technicals, we're also steadily working on expanding customer base and securing registrations with more uh, global players to improve our share. In CSM, we are working on new relationships and alliances with global players. On the back of three new contracts in fiscal year 24, we have further successfully completed pilot-scale production of pre-commercial quantities of 
flavocyte, a novel insecticide uh, for Biogene uh, Technology Limited, an Australian company. We are confident that these new partnerships will meaningfully contribute to both top line and bottom line in the years to come. Uh, moving into domestic crop care, our growth was 11% with volume growth of 17%. Quality of growth was also good with future growth categories like herbicide and crop nutrition witnessing 25% and 29% growth respectively. Herbicide category is under, in, under, under indexed within our business and we are consistently working on improving the share progressively. Within crop nutrition, Geo Green did highest ever volume in H1 with organic category volumes. Our new product launches such as Clasto for cotton whitefly and Mark Plus, uh, protein, soybean, herbicide, showed good promise and we are confident of the potential uh, for a scale-up. Within crop nutrition, Niagen and water-soluble fertilizer, which is a perfect range, are scaling up fast. We also conducted our key dealer and retailer meetings to improve the engagement. Our excellence around expanded, expanding targeted reach and penetration leveraging digital is also in good momentum. We also we have commenced the work on relation, uh, rationalizing the portfolio and sharpening focus across key markets. And you'll hear more of it in the quarters to come. Moving to seed business, uh, it recorded a 1,041 1, crore revenue, 141 crore revenue with 48% growth over previous years. Mainly due to low and Kharif 24 volume returns resulting from calibrated placements leveraging SeedSay digital tool. SeedSay is an AI and ML based sales forecast modeling tool based on historical sale and other business factors. We'll further work on improving the tool to keep sales return under check. The near term outlook for the business, particularly export business, remains challenging. Domestic business has positive outlook on the back of good reservoir level. Our efforts are now directed towards improving customer centricity, softening the portfolio choices, expanding alliances, and leveraging digitalization across the operations. Uh, we launched Unburned Edge, uh, a unified retailer management app for both crop care and seed business. Uh, that concludes my opening remark. I will now hand over it to Subra, our CFO, for a detailed analysis of the financials. Over to you, Subra. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ganindu. Good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you for joining us today for a Q2 and H1 earnings call. I'll walk you through a financial performance for the quarter post week shall commence the Q&A session. Uh, starting with the top line for the quarter, our revenue stood at 928 crores as against 832 crores for the same period last year. Volume growth has been encouraging at 17% with pricing challenges impacting overall growth. EBITDA for the quarter was 166 crores as against 133 crores for the same period last year. Profit after tax for the quarter stood at 98, as against 82 crores for the same period last year. Moving on to business-wise performance, domestic crop care registered uh, growth of 11% with 17% volume growth. Domestic uh, demand was buoyant with positive monsoon and better commodity prices. Overall, rubby outlook is also positive with increased reservoir levels. As far as seeds is concerned, our calibrated placements in Kharif helped us in maximizing liquidation in the context of short, stock shortage to ensure most effective utilization of the inventory. Seeds business has grown by 48%. We are significantly pleased with the response we are getting for our cotton hybrid, Pinkus, and believe it has significant growth runway. Our focus will primarily be on five key crops, cotton, maize, millet, mustard, and rice. We believe focus on such selective crops will aid in driving scale. We aim to gradually build a presence across these five crops with focus on profitability. In exports business, lower prices continue to impact revenues, while demand recovery continues to be slow. Sales of metribuzine and hexaconazole maximize, whereas for acephate specifically, continues to remain soft. Our efforts on expanding customer base and product portfolio are going to help build more resilient business. Our efforts continue to be directed towards uh, driving focused execution, both at the front and the back end. This includes portfolio optimization, territory rationalization, removing overlaps and driving cost efficiencies and simplification across the value chain. Our actions across portfolio refresh also continues with two new products in crop nutrition and three products in seeds launched during the quarter. We also continue to be relentless on improving capital efficiency, both for fixed capital and working capital. We plan to adopt a measured approach in export segment and will not set up capacities and we have contracts in hand and have improved utilization for already set up capacities. Our inventory levels have moderated. Collections have also improved. Though in some stress markets, collections improvement will continue to be a focus. 
uh, we have a healthy cash and liquid balance of 229 crores as of 30th September. Uh, we emphasize that spends on capex would be not would be around 100 crores. We also expect to commence a construction for integrated R&D center and a phase manner soon. In summary, we are implementing various initiatives and in drive towards achieving consistent, competitive, and profitable growth. That concludes the opening remarks. We can now commence a Q&A session. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, a reminder, please restrict yourself to one question and one follow-up question. One, one moment, please, while we poll for questions. Our first question comes from the line of Tarang from Old Bridge Capital. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, uh, good morning and congratulations for a strong set of numbers. A uh, couple of questions. First, on the seeds business, um, what do you think uh, drove your volumes? I mean, you've uh, you've uh, indicated enough that it was because of calibrated placements, but uh, would it therefore be fair to presume that your expectation of sales return for Q2 was uh, materially lower than what actually turned out? And second, uh, uh, within the seeds business, uh, how are the volumes for Atish and Dekas for FY25? Because uh, the commentary seemed to suggest that you all are quite uh, optimistic on uh, the offtake of Dekas, but the fact of the matter is that uh, cotton... Um, uh, across industry uh, was pretty bad uh, for Kharif of 24. Yeah, so uh, uh, so uh, so thank you for your comments. I, I think, you know, what drove volume, uh, I think uh, one of the things we have been saying is, look, we are trying to be better in forecasting uh, how much we place and uh, where we place. Uh, the investment we are making on digital capabilities, we, we talked about, you know, uh, seed say, uh, that, that basically uh, takes into account what is likely to be uh, you know, accepted in the market and the other parameters which we're using that helps us in uh, placing the product in, in the right quantity at the right places. Now, they, these are still early days, but I would say that that's, that certainly has helped us in uh, placing the product at right place in the right markets and helping reduce the return. So so the difference between uh, previous years and this year is a significant low return uh, uh, compared to the previous seasons, and that led to overall net, real, uh, net, net sale going up. Coming back to the specifics, I think because, as we have said earlier, also as then they will, literally we had a, a neg negligible return, I think. Uh, now this is one, one product which has... Uh, uh, cross more than 50 crore uh, brand uh, of the total cotton, and we, we are very bullish on Big Gush, uh for the north. Artis, of course, is a product. I think is a mature product. is rather on decline. Uh, we we uh, we were very careful about building inventory of that. So as we move forward in the seed, I think I've been talking about managing this business for profitability, and it comes from also managing operational efficiencies, and that's where. A combination of digital tool, better planning, and better placement uh, will help along in long way, uh, making sure that uh, we are not losing money on one side as we try to generate revenue. Sure. Just to follow up on this, so uh, I mean, typically from what I understand is that your seeds portfolio is uh, skewed more towards rice and maize, followed by millet and cotton. Right. Uh, if I look at H1 acreages for maize and rice, generally uh, uh, it's been it's been a good kharif uh, for both these crops for various reasons. Uh, so, how much of your performance in in H1, rather than looking at it in Q2 and Q1 basis, would be a function of uh, those end markets really doing well? Uh, and how much would you attribute it to uh, uh, because there is uh, 
uh, you know the function of the market having done really well rainfalls being fairly dispersed fair, fairly continuous which hasn't been seen in the last 3 years at least yeah so if you start looking at portfolio i think uh, look uh, so rice obviously uh, we didn't have enough seed otherwise we would have sold more so rice has done uh, overall uh, well for us so, so whatever quantity we had i think we have been good in liquidating that cotton though is one crop it has gone down from 12 million hectare to 11 million hectare but 11 million 11 million hectare is still a very large crop right uh, so from that perspective i would say uh, Uh, we we uh, we were still able to capitalize you know because of the good demand of our products so so market has gone down by 10 per, by 10% but the products which were in demand they have still done well that explains cotton and rice millet our portfolio i would say is still not competitive uh, uh, to be in the leadership position we are working on it and same applies to the maize but maize because we didn't have lot of inventory we were still able to sell we could have sold more if we had inventory but Yes, as we move forward, I think we are getting good traction in our cotton, and I, I think our biggest hope, our biggest success will come uh, when we are able to crack a good product for South and Central, which we are working on. Uh, rice, we have a good portfolio. Uh, millet, I think we are working on, and maize is something also work in progress. Thank you. The next question is from Nirbhay Mahavar with N Square Capital. Please go ahead. Good morning, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. So, just a follow-up on the Digaj. Uh, what is the uh, what is its target market size right now, and what is the our market share as of now? And so, what is our aspiration of it? So, Digaj market uh, primarily is uh, targeted towards uh, northern northern part of the country, which is a uh, three adjoining states of Punjab, Haryana, and Rajasthan, where cotton is grown. Uh, so if you say how much india is grown punjab grows about 2 lakh hectares haryana grows about 5 lakh hectares and rajasthan has similar area so there about 1.2 uh, million hectares say so 10% of the total cotton area gets planted in that that place that's where this product is uh, uh, now uh, getting planted uh, now the, that area particularly in uh, punjab and haryana has been under pressure but still i think 1 million hectare in a concentrated pocket is a sizable area and uh, we believe uh, we still have significant headroom to uh, grow given the performance of the gaj you know in coming years sir could we give these numbers in terms of number of packets we are selling versus total market size so i mean i think you know uh, look uh, we are in production right now right uh, Uh, we would have a fair estimate of how much inventory would become available by february march so at this point of time you know uh, if i have even say 2 million packet i can say sell all of it right but i i know we are not going to get that kind of production because of this wet season uh, also production uh, becomes very very challenging so i guess for this question if you ask me in the month of february march i'll be able to give you a better projection thank you The next question is from the line of Siddharth Gadekar with Aquarius. Please go ahead. Oh, hi, sir. Good morning. Uh, so, on the seed business, uh, just wanted to understand that have you taken any price hike? Is it there was a shortage of seeds in the market? And can you quantify between value and volume growth during first half of 2025? Ah, uh, so I want to say I talk about break. So price hike we took. Uh, so because the mix also changed significantly because cotton as a portfolio has become one of the has become our largest uh, uh, crop in the portfolio. So there's a combination of price and mix sitting there. But if I slice it, uh, there's a large part of the gain which has come from volume price and mix, and not so much from volume because inventory was already constrained. But uh, cotton has done well. Paddy, in the circumstances that uh, Dr. Shukla spoke about, given the constraints of inventory, we were able to liquidate whatever whatever we had. Maize followed by maize, where also like, returns were very low. So uh, it's a combination of both price and mix, which has contributed to the growth. And uh, secondly, in terms of our sales return, can you quantify the number that was there in the last year's base number and this year? What was the sales return? so i wouldn't be able to quantify but if you look at first half returns uh, first half performance itself as i said that uh, if you look at if, if i give you some products for instance because we were sitting at almost zero returns so it was practically zero return 
Paddy was also no net return except for some small returns we had to take because and uh, may as well make very low returns so it was largely millet compared to last year last year we were uh, as as uh, dr shukla alluded there was also technology which helped in terms of digital placement plus also some interventions we did in terms of identifying the right distributors placing it uh, with the right kind of uh, inputs in terms of marketing inputs so all of that helped in reducing the returns thank you the next question comes from the line of abhijit akela with kotak securities please go ahead yeah uh, good morning uh, thank you so much for taking my questions uh, just to follow up on the previous question uh, you know on the seed revenue growth for the first half which is about uh, 2% uh, you know for the first half i'm talking about if you could please just split it out in terms of volume versus uh, price and mix that would be helpful So, Abhijit, large part of it, as I said, has come from volume and mix. So, uh, high single digit would come from uh, price and mix, and volume would be largely flatish. Okay, got it. Thank you. Um, similarly, uh, possible to just uh, you know split it out for the domestic crop care business as well, please, uh, Shubhra. Uh, and then I just have one quick follow up. Sorry, domestic crop care. Uh, the same uh, split between volume and price. the so domestic crop care for stuff you wanted right so domestic crop care has had a minus 6% price peak growth uh, and talking about formulation business and uh, the volume growth is positive at uh, 18% right and just one, one last thing uh, on the bio uh, gene uh, project we have uh, if you could please just help us understand the uh, uh, revenue model that we are kind of envisaging there uh, will it be um, you know do, do we derive uh, you know some cut of the royalty that biogene makes from its licensing to its commercial partners or do we instead supply the molecule directly to biogene's uh, licensees so, you know how exactly do we make money in this project so i, I think uh, look this is a, uh, a new arrangement uh, the way it starts in the beginning is uh, we we have a supply contract we we, we set up a facility produced for them and we make margin there uh, but in future there may be a possibility of uh, you know uh, uh, getting distribution rights of these products thank you the next question comes from the line of rohit nagaraj with centrum broking please go ahead uh, yeah thanks for the opportunity and congrats on very good set of numbers uh, so first question is on the industry front so in your comment you also mentioned that uh, there has been uh, Now, the market is well supplied from china uh, however our performance uh, is otherwise uh, in such a you know uh, challenging environment so what is your understanding in terms of a uh, immediate impact of the well supplied market on the volumes uh, across different geographies and b when we would uh, see any pricing improvement uh, given this context thank you So, so I, I think uh, now, uh, given that there was a good rain uh, and commodity prices were favorable, that led to obviously a volume gain. Uh, a pricing is something very, very difficult to predict because uh, no matter how much we continue to undermine China, uh, China has capacity and they have ability to supply. Uh, no, at the uh, at the way at very competitive price. So. So I, I guess that's a very difficult one to predict. I think what is uh, easy for me, and I have been saying in the past, is that I'm going to focus on domestic branded business, where uh, I have to make sure my product, my product is being used more by the same farmer and on the more uh, crop acres. That's where our focus is because price is a variable. If I'm in a domestic branded business, that also allows me to charge some premium at the brand level. so that's our form primary focus because that something china we're not going to control we're not going to really you know going to stop china right and guys are also trying to diversify some of our uh, supply chain domestically to say how do we balance reliance on china versus domestic players those domestic suppliers including our own production capacity Sure. Uh, so, second question is on the balance sheet front. So, the trade receivables seem to have gone up to about 850 crores from about 580 crores on a YY basis. 
and top line has grown up by about 100 odd crores so is it uh, due to maybe leaner credit terms offering or is there any other reason thank you so trade receivables has gone up from 773 crores to 852 crores uh, rohit so there is an 80 crores increase a part of it is uh, contributed uh, because of the increase in the domestic sales uh, but there's no concern uh, there's no pocket of concern and there's also an element of uh, uh, some discounting that we had done in the base period uh, for export receivables which is not there thank you the next question is from the line of viraj from simpl please go ahead yeah couple of questions uh first is on the seed what you said is the volume is flat and the growth we have seen is largely a function of price and mix am i right yes so you know if we look at last year same quarter we had seen a very strong growth and the reason for that was that there was a delay in the season from q1 to q2 so even on that higher volume base you know we have seen a very healthy growth and this is in background of us seeing a supply shortage in seeds in q1 so just trying to understand you know if we can give some perspective in terms of crop wise growth performance and when we say the price or the mix element you know uh, which is of the two which is a larger factor so i think uh, we have been taking uh, uh, significant steps i think couple of years back we spoke about that in seeds business we were first uh, uh reset the business and look at profitability and then start working on growth as you mentioned in multiple course that a cotton hybrid especially north one has done well uh there are multiple other hybrids in paddy maize which also doing very well so i spoke about that cotton has now become the biggest crop for us we have touched along with uh, pickers and other brands we will do almost 100 rows we almost all, already touched 100 rows of revenue this year so it's a combination of and that's why when you said that on the back of a good FY24 FY25 performance has also been good we we are hopeful that many of the launches that we have planned will be able to scale up uh, yeah so that does that answer your question no actually i was just still trying to understand if you can just still give some perspective in terms of crop wise performance and and it also come back to the second question which i also had on the margin front see if you look in terms of the order packing order cotton has a usually the lowest margin profile in the segments for seed now for us when we say crop one is cotton is the one which has given the highest growth for us uh, still despite that we have seen a very healthy improvement in operating margin so i'm just trying to connect you know just understand better in terms of both the sales mix profile and similarly the impact on margins you know when we see the price or the mix how is that given the margin part so cotton uh, indeed has shown the highest growth both in terms of top line and bottom line and it depends on the mix of the products that we have so then you are right in the industry level maybe cotton is making lower margin but it depends on the products that you have in the portfolio so for us both a combination of revenue growth and uh, the operating leverage and the fact that we have been able to hold overheads or uh, optimize them has helped in operating margin improvement thank you the next question comes from the line of himanshu biyani with anand rati please go ahead um thank you sir for taking my questions and congratulations on a good set of numbers so sir i just one question in terms of the field business so till last quarter there was a commentary from us as well as from the industry in terms of like the supply side concerns which we had and as per my understanding first quarter happens to be the heaviest for the field industry so during the last quarter we have like posted a decline into the field business and that was largely led by the supply side constraints and all of a sudden we have been like able to post somewhere around the 48 50 percent sort of growth in the field business considering an higher base of last year also so maybe if you can like help me in understanding this So much we were not able to follow clearly, but I think your question was that despite shortage of feeds, how we were able to deliver a better performance in Q2? Right. Yeah, so I, I think it, it, it's very simple. Uh, I think in C, what we call is uh, before season you do the placement, right? And then farmer buys the seed and unsold inventory comes back, and that gives you net return, right? Uh, so a net of returns, I think. uh while we had shortage on the seed but our supplies level were 
uh, I mean, were not enough to take benefit of the demand, but they were good enough to uh, uh, really, uh, they were probably at the similar level in terms last, of liquidation. Year, mm. But because we were able to uh, reduce significantly return, uh, that allowed us in a still coming to the level of, you know, previous year in terms of, you know, volume and some, some price benefit combination of that. So, in fact, Manchu, uh, one thing that probably will help all of you guys are deep inventory of one of the lowest across various years now. So, the inventory levels have significantly come down. Uh, so, we have been able to uh, sell whatever was there. Or whatever was sellable. So whatever was sellable, yeah. Got it. So, due to the supply side constraint, the growth of this sort of number is largely led by the prices, basically. It's right. not much a lesser returns, actually. That actually, if you look at first half level, we are flat. So first half level, we are 1%. So our current liquidation has been in line with last year. But this is where the placements were lower because of the inventory and the liquid and because of effective use of technology and better marketing and sales efforts, we were able to reduce returns. Got it. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. That's all from me. Thank you. The next question comes from the line of Darshita. From Antic Broking, please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thank you for the opportunity and congratulations on good numbers. Uh, my first question was regarding the uh, current channel inventory that we have for the domestic uh, curb care business. Uh, is it on a higher end, and are we expecting a lot of sales returns of the Kharif inventory that we have? I mean, a lot of sales returns reflecting in the third quarter of the Kharif inventory that we currently have. So, so. <laughs> Again, uh, look, I, I think uh, this year planting is higher of overall uh, crops. Uh, and also because of continued rain, uh, we expect, because Kharif season doesn't uh, end in September, Kharif season, particularly in some crop in pulses, even in some late rice and cotton continues till October. So obviously uh, uh, there's a required level of inventory in the, in the market, but we are very careful and calibrated, and I, I think we have a system of making sure we uh, provide based on our best estimate, and this is something we keep uh, trying to learn and improve more. At this point of time, I, I don't think we have any excess inventory uh, which we would like to leave in the market, because leaving excess inventory also has a lot of other repercussions. All right, okay. And uh, the second question was regarding the higher tax rate during the quarter, if you can uh, give us some idea on that. So, Nashita, uh, because of this long-term capital gains uh, tax reduction by union budget, uh, there was an uh, unwinding of the deferred tax assets created uh, for both carry-forward of losses and long-term capital gains. So, that's a one-time impact which has come for the effective tax rate. Thank you. The next question comes from the line of Saket Kapoor from Kapoor and Company. Please go ahead. Yeah, Namaskar, sir, and thank you for the opportunity. Sir, firstly, in your opening remarks, you did allude to this extended monsoon and water logging and, and other issues uh, that affected the uh, the after sales, uh, that is moisture still remaining uh, in the in the field, uh, agriculture field. So uh, taking these factors into account, sir, and uh, the reservoir levels, what should be uh, uh, the, the growth uh, that we are eyeing for the, uh, the current years, taking into account the ensuing rabi season and also the extended curry uh, part, which just our MD alluded to? Well, I think all I have been saying, our uh, our attempt is going to be we grow uh, better than the market, right? Uh, that's our attempt, and that's what we are targeting. I'm, I'm certainly not in a position to put a number or give a number. Right. And sir, uh, lastly, we have also been looking uh, for to, uh, to link the active ingredient part with other manufacturers. So uh, what kind of business are we outsourcing uh, in terms of we looking into the B2B segment of formulation? and the active ingredient uh, portfolio being managed by other players. So what kind of business uh, have, have, have we outsourced for the current year? And if you could mention who are the key players whom, with whom we are uh, engaging for the same. See, I, I think we, we always talk about, talk about our crop care business in a uh, uh, key a few buckets. And first bucket is really domestic formulation, as I've been saying in the, cost also, that's my number one priority. 
Now, that obviously I have to find an optimal point, make versus buy. So, those decisions we keep making. Obviously, because of many confidential agreements we have with the parties, we are not able to disclose our names and all. But for us, it's a optimal. I make make or buy decision, I'll make on that. Uh, uh, what is right for me because we have capacities and we want to use the capacities. Now, then we also have a domestic institutional business where we sell some of our technicals we make on a bulk basis to parties. Uh, that's a business for us, but it's, that is not something we we are very aggressive about it. Or we, are, you know, we participate in that market, but we are very calibrated because those markets also we want to make sure you now uh, we are not overexposing the you no. Know, uh, the third business is basically international business where we sell, and that market remains subdued. But then once is there, so uh, metrogen has done well for us. Pendimethylene uh, is doing okay. Uh, uh, we have done, you uh, know, uh, uh, on fungi side we have done well. I think where we have challenges is really SFA, and we are trying to address that. I have been very uh, candid about it. Uh, do I have a solution? I think we have certain options we are evaluating, and as when those options become uh, you know, uh, executable, we'll certainly get back. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ravi Purohit with Securities Investment Management Private Limited. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thanks for taking my question and congratulations on good set of numbers. Uh, sir, since you've joined the company um, in the last couple of quarters, you've alluded to uh, changes that you're looking to make uh, both uh, in terms of, you know, making our seeds portfolio more profitable, uh, pruning the loss-making parts of it, and also uh, kind of working on uh, getting the missing decade back on the cram side, like contract manufacturing or tying up or make or... Uh, you know, uh, buy or, you know, distribute rather than, you know, uh, make uh, certain products on the, on the agrochem side. So if you could just kind of give us a brief update on that strategy and uh, what kind of pruning or what kind of uh, things we have already done on the seed side and what, uh, what are the opportunities that we are working on on the agrochem side, working with MNCs particularly, both in terms of uh, licensing uh, to sell in the domestic market and exporting, uh, you know, for, for their requirements. So uh, I, I can give you uh, just a general observation. So the way we are working is, one, we, we need a product, uh, product sourcing. So we are aggressively uh, reaching out to uh, discovery-related companies all over the world to really make sure that we have a pipeline and that pipeline remains robust. Uh, on, on the CSM side, I think uh, we are very selective. As I said, we have enough capacity on the ground. We will be very calibrated. Uh, 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 first, first priority to use the capacity to maximum and then uh, get into any new contract before we set up the capacity. So that, that's how strategy is. But I, I, I believe, you know, uh, we also talked about this domestic formulation making more efficient. That work we did not want to touch because the reef season was going on, but we are in the midst of exercise. And that exercise should get completed in a couple of months. So as we enter the new year, we would be able to actually go with a uh, completely, uh, what do you call, streamlined portfolio approach where uh, we may be, uh, we may be looking at tail and say, look, whether this tail is desirable or not. So we're in the process of doing that exercise and we'll take uh, every step because ultimately goal I've been saying, look, for me, uh, ultimate measure of success is going to be return on capital. That and that that has to come from various measures, you know, uh, including revenue, cost, and uh, optimizing you know profits wherever possible by looking at the portfolio. Right. Uh, thanks. Uh, thanks on that, uh, sir. And we'll appreciate if you could kind of you know give a brief update on that. Um, you know, uh, in every quarter. I don't know. Maybe part of the presentation or you know part of the press release. Um, and so my second question is on you know. Um, uh, on seeds portfolio, right? Uh, you know, uh, I think you've of course run a fairly large and profitable seeds business uh, uh, under Monsanto, you know, Bayer uh, combined. So, what what is the sense that that you get uh, here in terms of the potential scalability of the seeds portfolio? We are really subscale in, in that sense, and at, at higher scale, seeds is a very very profitable business if done right. 
so so if you could just kind of share as to what what would your medium term to long term strategy would be on on scaling up the seeds business so so fundamentally we said we are going to participate in five crops right and i can give you i mean these numbers keep changing but back of envelope number a uh, cotton seed market is about 3000 crore hybridized seed market is about 2 and 1/2 thousand crore so that makes it 5 and 1/2 uh millet market is about 1500 crore <laughs> sorry uh, so about 700 crore not 15 it's 1500 tons right so so about 4, 500 crore say so that makes it 6000 tons and then there's another mustard of you know 500 crore so so we are operating in an inverse of you know Uh, and then add uh, other crops like maize and then in worth of 10000 crore of uh, seed market which is almost 50% of the total seed market now if you see our market share in that is uh, roughly 4% right of 20000 2% of 10000 is 4% our uh, our objective should be that we start growing our market share in that segment and i, I guess Uh, different crops are at different stages in terms of portfolio readiness i think right now we are slightly better in cotton uh, followed by rice followed by i would say maize and millet that's where we are and so increasingly you will see as we try to grow our volume and market share uh, you say in next one to two years more gains are going to come from cotton uh, a little bit from rice and then subsequently from millet and maize but our aim would be that look we come to respectable at least a high single digit or you know it's a low double digit thank you the next all depends on the portfolio because i i think the cotton cost i mean every seed business is a product business uh, there's nothing called you to here your product must perform otherwise even you can give it to given give free to the farmer won't buy thank you The next question is from the line of Bhavya Gandhi with Dalal and Borocha Stock Broking. Please go ahead. Yeah, I thank for the opportunity. Just wanted to know what is the absolute export number for the quarter and for the first half. Just give me a minute. Uh, in any color on that 
Well, uh, I, I think uh, I, I, I would, uh, I would uh, boast a lot about B2B. Mm. I think it's really, you know, as I've been saying, our story uh, first, first has to be, you know, about uh, uh, how do we strongly continue to grow our uh, domestic business. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rithik Jain with Nirmal Bang Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. My first question is on uh, when can we expect export to see normal volume growth? Uh, 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 well, I, I think the look, uh, export is a very competitive business. Uh, uh, I think what we are trying to work on, and I've been talking about this, is that we are work, working on multiple fronts. One is uh, just uh, existing uh, product portfolio. So uh, I think we are having a reason, uh, good traction on metropolitan pendimethylene and uh, uh, hexaconazole. But uh, we have challenges on SFA. But having said that, uh, uh, we are also looking at uh, various relationships. First of all, how to optimize and increase the sales of existing portfolio. And then, then uh, uh, start working up some of the pipeline uh, product we don't have you know uh, like big big products but uh, there, there's a uh, decent pipeline developing our team is working on the ground uh, it will only uh, uh, show improvement in the coming years uh, having said that as if it will uh, continue to be a uh, you know, uh, uh, trouble but I, I think uh, is a, a troubled child I would say we have to work on it okay okay and uh, yeah, if the seed business uh, sustains its growth of uh, first uh, half of FY25, uh, what is the ROC one can expect from the seed segment on a sustainable basis? Yeah, I, I think you know, we, we first thing I, I made a statement that look, we want to manage this uh, business for profitability and what I call fit to run, right? I think we have to get to a fitness level where. Uh, we reach to a stage where our business doesn't make losses at all, and I think we are slowly inching towards that and consolidating that position. And uh, we are also stepping up our R&D efforts so that we are able to launch new products at the same time and are able to take out old products. I think if we just get that cycle right, I, I think, uh, as I said, looking at 10,000 crore segment we operate, we are just 4%. Uh, there's a lot of headroom to grow. So I think in seats, I think what you should understand is the large capex investment is only working capital. There's no fixed capital as such. So what Dr. Shukla alluded, it's more important for us to drive profitability and keep the working capital under check. So I think both the actions have started showing some momentum and we should be able to hopefully improve. Uh, more important is that the seat should not be a drag on the company profitability. So we have to first move to a positive zone and then keep improving it from there. Thank you. The next question. Just one minute. Uh, somebody had asked the number on uh, international business. So we did a 143 crores of revenue in uh, Q2. Uh, the next question is from the line of Manish Shah, an individual investor. Please go ahead. So man has already answered that question. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Bhavya Gandhi with Dalal and Brocha Stockbroking. Uh, hi, thanks for the opportunity. So one, uh, I mean, you just answered on the uh, 2Q export data. On the uh, one half also, if you can share uh, what was the export data. And on the hexaconazole, I just wanted to understand, it's a big product for us in the export market, whereas other companies are still struggling, uh, maybe the likes of Aztec, Life Science and all this. What strategy are we adapting that uh, our product is still uh, surviving in the export market? Yeah, that's it from my end. The first half revenue for international business is 275 crores. Uh, as far as Hexa is concerned, I think uh, it's a smaller, uh, it has a smaller overall market, but we are the market leaders there, and we do have a strong customer relationship and uh, uh, good registrations even in Southeast Asian markets. And I believe it's a small market, it's a small business, but uh, we are working almost like max out capacity today. In fact, we have. We bottleneck some of the capacity, and we're also looking at alternate ways to expand the capacity. Okay. In short, we have some pricing power when it comes to the export market, when it comes to hexaconazole. 
because of a relation and maybe because of registration. Yeah, it's a small market though. You say combination mm -hmm. of registration, uh, mm -hmm. customer relationship. Uh, quality of the product. I think several factors play together. Yeah, and also the dynamics that it has with other molecules, other competing molecules. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Tarang from Old Bridge Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, two questions actually, both on crop protection. Uh, one on acephate. Uh, sir, I mean, given your vintage with the molecule and uh, my sense is uh, uh, your experience and scale with the molecule, uh, what do you think right now uh, has happened in the marketplace uh, uh, which is specifically rendering this particular molecule as a problem child? I mean, has there been a technological shift? Uh, do you see widespread competition which is driving the prices down, higher inventory in the marketplace or there are only specific uh, uh, players in the uh, manufacturing value chain which are uh, being extremely aggressive. So that's one. And second, uh, overall crop protection, if I uh, look at, uh, you know, uh, the domestic and the exports business, uh, volumes have done reasonably well. Uh, and this uh, coming from uh, a fairly soft um, previous year where uh, inventory was sort of a challenge both in the international and domestic marketplace. Uh, so therefore, would it be safe to presume that uh, while pricing continues to be a challenge uh, for the broader industry, uh, but uh, the destocking challenges that were being witnessed in the previous year, uh, they have come to, uh, uh, they are effectively addressed. So two questions, thanks. So, uh, see, uh Related to SS8, I think one of the things we have to understand is a very concentrated market. This product is primarily consumed in Brazil, uh, US, and uh, a little bit in India, right? These are the three primary markets. They probably are 80-90% of the total volume. Now, our competitors here are actually Adama and UPA. Now, both of them are uh, significantly backward integrated from a manufacturing perspective as well as they have a significant B, uh, B2C market as well in these markets, and that, I think, puts us at some disadvantage. So we're trying to figure out you know, how do we solve this, because, A, we don't have B2C presence in these markets, so, so we're looking at relationship and what kind of relationship we can develop to uh, have uh, B2C indirect presence, you know, by having a supplier relationship with the local uh, people there. Other thing is we're also looking at, you know, how can we... Uh, do some uh, cost uh, cost reengineering on the uh, manufacturing operations we have got. So a couple of options we are evaluating. Uh, I don't have a clear answer. Obviously, we know few things can be done. Uh, as I said, you know earlier also, I think we would we would like to have a clarity. You know, uh, uh, sooner the better. But I, I think it just takes time because you know uh, the things uh, uh, we have to understand global dynamics. The easier option is that we're not making things get out of the product, right? I think we're not at that stage yet. <laughs> we have to just, uh, whatever we do, we have to make sure, you know, we have all the information and we have considered all the options. Sure. And uh, for my second question, sir? Second question is global crop protection market. See, uh, global crop protection market, if you see, is uh, primarily driven by uh, two factors, you know, so... Obviously, North America and South America become very, very important, and commodity prices also play a very, very important role. Now, there was an uptick in commodity prices beginning of the year, but I think uh, with good production estimates coming out of the U.S. and uh, rainfall situation being better in Latin America, commodity prices are relatively softer, particularly uh, for key crops like uh, maize and soybean, including cotton, right? So... Uh, I think a lot of, uh, uh, so yes, you're right, uh, the, the stocking is by and large done. As a result, current year numbers should look better, but uh, <coughs> we have to understand <coughs> that uh, it's not a very buy and demand. It's not that suddenly 20% more crop is being grown all across the earth, right? And China continues to supply at a, a very competitive rate, so I'm not expecting any 
<laughs> directed to happen in this market i think it's going to be a normal uh, normal growth period uh, prices will continue to remain subdued given the commodity prices and uh, supply situation thank you the next question is from the line of abhijit sakela with kotak securities please go ahead thank you so much uh, just a uh, few follow ups one is uh, Uh, with regard to the newer products in the, the domestic crop care business, uh, would it be possible to uh, just share the kind of growth we've experienced from that in uh, in the first half of the year? And number two was just on uh, the categories. Uh, you did give us some numbers for herbicide and crop nutrition growth, but if you could also please just specify insecticides and fungicides, that would be helpful. Thank you so much. So uh, I don't know if we have this specific number today to share, but maybe we can say later on. But uh, I guess some of the product launches we had made this year, uh, they are looking very good. Uh, particularly, we had a uh, soybean herbicide launch uh, that seems very promising. Uh, as I've been saying in the past, the herbicide becomes very very important for me, and uh, luckily we have a good launch now. Uh, Uh, I think if you wait till really uh, November, I, I think I will have clarity on Kharif. That might be the best time for you, uh, you know, for us to give you some clarity. At this point, then I would say, herbicide and nutrition I have done well. Uh, fungicides are okay. Uh, so are insecticide, and that is reflected in overall numbers. So, Abhijit, I think uh, we published this ITI on an annual basis, Innovation Turnover Index, which will reflect. But safe to say that uh, in first half as well. it's tracking well above our it's tracking in line with our expectations how we say that as a segment we don't have significant uh, our portfolio is under index but we have done well uh, fungicide uh, followed by uh, fungicide and then insecticide thank you the next question is from the line of viraj from simpl please go ahead Yeah, just one question. Uh, both in seed and domestic crop care, you know, when we say portfolio rationalization, what kind of a turn in the portfolio would you have would have seen last six months? Cost, cost, cost. Uh, which is the absolute, absolute cost. Are you talking about what we have done or what we are expecting? Uh, what we have done and what we are expecting. So I think what we are looking at is tail portfolio rationalization, which is where either the scale up has not happened as per expectation or the is adding to the complexity. We are yet to complete the exercise, but I wouldn't say that it would have a meaningful impact on the bottom line. Thank you. Uh, the next question is from the line of Saket Kapoor from Kapoor and Company. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you very much for the opportunity again. So, uh, madam if you could give me the capex number which we have done for the last uh, 3 years and what kind of capacity augmentation uh, is in uh, it has been done in the agrochemical space we have done about 650 crores of capex out of the 800 crores of capex that we spoke about in the last 5 years and if i slice it the big one had gone behind multi purpose plant uh, which is around 200 crores uh multi purpose plant as dr shukla alluded there are some challenges in getting uh, higher capacity utilization because of the global uh, situation as well so we hope to improve the utilization as we start seeing more contracts for it uh the the next 100 crores went into formulation plant which is uh, helping us uh, which is working at uh, in line with our expectations or in line with the business case that we have done still there's significant headroom for expansion of capacity there And uh, the uh, the last few ones went into capacity expansion, the bottlenecking of existing capacities, some of the sustenance capex we did, and digital investments that we spoke about in both in front end and back end. Ma'am, just to uh, add to it, for the multi-purpose, can you elaborate uh, uh, where, where, where which market, which products are we addressing to, and what kind of asset turnover can we expect at uh, optimum utilization level? See, multi-purpose plan by nature name itself is a multi-purpose plan, so it's supposed to help you do multiple chemistries before the scale up of the volume happens, and then you can set up an individual or standalone capacity for it. So we have done multiple products for it, both for contract manufacturing customers and also the nitrogen conazole product, the fungicide that we launched last year. 
So there are few more products in the pipeline, both from our uh, international business and contract manufacturing that we will put there. And depending on how this scale up, we move it to the uh, standalone plan. As far as asset turns is concerned, it's difficult to comment on it today. But I think we, what we are going to work on is how do you keep improving utilization and hopefully some of these products will contribute to our top line in years to come. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Somaya with Avendis Spark. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity, sir. So, uh, question is on the CSM part, uh, CSM business. So, what is the strategy here in CSM? Two years out, how do we see uh, you know, CSM as a percentage of our total uh, revenue share? That is one. And also, if you could just help us with what is the current contribution of CSM in our overall portfolio? Uh, and also, I think you mentioned in your opening remarks three uh, contracts. Uh, if you can talk about opportunity set on these three contracts, that should be helpful. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, look, our uh, CSM strategy uh, is, uh, uh, I think, is very simple. Uh, we are not uh, ch chasing everybody. We are looking at, see, see I guess big deals I, I don't think are available at this point of time. Uh, we we are relatively late imprint in this game. Uh, we we are having multiple conversation with uh, you know uh, various yeah. parties uh, and the different conversations are at very different stage. All I can say is uh, we we are generally getting encouraging response. Uh, at this point of time, very difficult uh, to put a number, but um, maybe. As things mature, we will start getting more clarity, but uh, things seem, seems to be uh, slowly building up. Uh, they certainly are not negative. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question. I now hand the conference back to the management for closing remarks. So, uh, so I think, you know, thanks uh, everybody for joining. Uh, uh, as I said, Agrochemical is uh, witnessing mixed signal of recovery. Influential business continues to be under pressure, uh, while volumes are better across. Most technical margins are lower due to competitive uh, uh, context. In domestic market, with current liquidation uh, uh, is slightly delayed. So we said no, right, because of the rain season ended. Uh, we are optimistically the costs of the placement. Our endeavor would be to continue running the business to improve market share across verticals. While the short term margin would be under pressure, long term uh, prospects continue to uh, remain good. So, uh, thank you very much uh, uh, for joining. Thank you. On behalf of Rallis and Yellow that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines.